Friends, if you were to ask me why is it a big deal that the tram's coming back, well, give me a moment to tell you the history of the tram and why it's so important to Disneyland fans everywhere that the tram is back to taking passengers. Driver, you are clear. When Disneyland opened in 1955, it sat right across from its huge parking lot that was able to house over 12,000 cars for the day and over time would eventually grow to 15,000 spaces. Instead of using slow to load and loud buses to help guests get from their car to the gates of Disneyland, Disney legend Bob Gurr's alternative plan was to use small tractors to pull bench wagons that could be linked together like a small train. There were two original trams, one for the massive Disneyland parking lot and the other for the Disneyland Hotel, which for years was the only transportation from Disneyland to the Disneyland Hotel. That was until the monorail showed up, where guests could go to the park in style, thus making the Disneyland Hotel tram irrelevant. And the parking lot trams would stay long after the Disneyland Hotel trams would, but eventually the Disneyland parking lot trams would have to go away because something much larger than a monorail was getting ready to show up. In Anaheim, Disney's new California Adventure theme park is now open. After four decades, the 100-acre parking lot would close permanently on January 21st, 1998. Three years of construction would not only create Disney California Adventure Park, a 72-acre California-themed park that was an adult-oriented park like Epcot where guests would find dining and shopping as the design focus. However, giving up the Disneyland parking lot for a second gate would create the need for other major construction projects. such as the seven-story, 10,000-plus car-holding Mickey and Friends parking structure that opened on July 24th in 2000, a state-of-the-art design allowing each level individual loading and unloading areas, allowing a relatively easy and organized entry in the morning and a very efficient exiting at the end of the day where you're not required to ride down every level to exit the parking structure. Placing the primary parking lot in the northwest corner of Disneyland property would require a new way to get guests to the gates of not one, but now two theme parks. Rounding out the distance would be the addition of two hotels in the downtown Disney shopping district. What was once the Disneyland theme park has now officially become the Disneyland Resort. In 1968, Bob Gurr would design a new generation of trams for a new generation of needs at the Disneyland Resort. Gone were the days of repainted tractors pulling guests through a parking lot. After 13 years of growing, Disneyland needed a more efficient and safer system to bring their guests along the now six of a mile or 3,300 foot path that was over 1,300 feet further in the old single parking lot system. One of the most noticeable changes to the modern tram system was now the guests set five rows facing forward and one row facing backward. To create this 200% more guest capacity per vehicle, the new Disneyland tram carts would need to each independently have two axles and four tires, creating the need for each cart to be able to perfectly follow the exact same path as the tram tractor or the cart in front of it. A ride system borrowed from airport vehicles that also demanded the same precision. But everyone knows you can't put the cart before the horse, and these new carts would need a powerful tractor to pull 200% more gas and to also increase the amount of carts 
Conqueror tram trip. The awkward design was birthed by the demand of efficiency and the need for more power than any existing small tractor on the market could offer the Disneyland Resort. Instead of using costly gasoline that would need to be trucked in or loud diesel engines, Disney chose compressed natural gas as its source of fuel. Where gas lines could be ran to the parking structure and along the Disneyland tram route. However, the need for housing huge natural gas tanks would be an equally huge design restriction, which is why we have the front windshield that also acts as the only cabin door for the tram driver. With up to seven passenger carts and over 200 guests per haul, a system was created where a cast member on the back eyes both sides of the tram for any guest going outside of the safe area. Then they relay all important information to the driver via a loudspeaker, where the driver uses the tram's horn to honk and respond back to the caboose cast member. This way, one cast member in the back can keep their eyes on the prize and the other can keep their eyes on the road. An unnoticeable system that only took 40 plus years to evolve to this largely unnoticed efficiency so seamlessly constructed that it was easy for most guests to take for granted. With an exciting day of Disneyland just beyond their final destination. The news hit employees this afternoon in a company-wide memo. On midnight, March 13th, 2020, Disneyland would close its gates for two weeks to help slow the spread of COVID-19. In the park's 65-year history, it had only three unplanned closures. One for weather, another for the assassination of a president, and lastly, for the saddest day on U.S. soil. But more than two weeks of sad days would lie ahead, as two weeks would slowly turn into 400 plus days. 400 lost days, where the world's happiest place was left alone and abandoned of good times and great memories, for the first time in over 23,000 days. But for those that make the magic, the Disney cast members, the news got even a little bit worse. Huge financial hits from the pandemic closures takes a toll on Disney as it announces it is laying off tens of thousands of workers. We begin today with breaking news from our parent company, Disney, announcing 28,000 layoffs at Disney theme park. Thousands of furloughed Disney parks employees in Anaheim found out they're now being laid off. The theme park closure is dragging into its seventh month. Disney, the 51st wealthiest company in America, couldn't keep paying theme park workers with the parks being closed. However, in 2021, the company was able to bounce back with record highs. And CEO Bob Chapek would earn $32 million, doubling his salary from the year before. Or as I like to put it, $1,142 per head of the 28,000 employees that Disney had laid off. Regardless of reasons or justifications, when we didn't know when the pandemic and California restrictions would end, Disney threw the towel in on its theme park workers until theme parks had permission to reopen their gates. I'm so excited to announce that on April 30th, we're gonna be welcoming guests back to Disneyland after a year of being closed. We're ready to make magic all over again. The reopening of Disneyland, it was magical. 
like living inside of a dream. But to reopen Walt's Park, Disney would have to abide by many California COVID-19 restrictions. Fans were eager to give Disneyland a big pass on closed attractions, shops, and restaurants. We were just happy to be back home at Disneyland. But then, as time went by, some of the COVID closures started to not add up. In the beginning, having the trams closed made perfect sense. Loading and unloading 200 people all at once would only create massive lines in the parking garage and unsafe lines to get inside of the park. Allowing everyone to walk the tram path at their own pace would mean that a light sprinkle of gas would show up at the gates allowing a natural and safe distribution of people. However, the post-pandemic era of Disney started to show their hand. Parkers that we talked to today, they're worried that this is just the start of even more increases to come. And just to give you an idea, this is a 400% increase in ticket prices uh, since just the year 2000 alone. So not that long ago, that was when tickets were just $40 per person. Ticket prices would get increased, but experiences were still down. Something didn't totally add up, and the Disneyland trams not returning became one of the biggest outrages of Disneyland guests. The trams being down, like when we did that walk, it was it's a long walk, and especially like at the end of the day, it's really tiring. As it started to become clear, the long and loud walk was no longer due to public safety, it was enforced because of saving money. Take a sizable workforce of a few hundred cast members, cut out fuel charges and vehicle maintenance, put your insurance on freeze, multiply this daily savings of tens of thousands of dollars times one year, and you just found an easy way to boost profits by saving millions of dollars by allowing your guests to put on an extra mile and a half walk on top of a day where they will be walking for hours and hours. If the enclosed buses could run from the not conveniently located Toy Story lot, then surely the open air Disneyland trams could have safely operated. On top of higher prices, mobile food ordering and a newly untrained staff. Due to letting the loyal staff go during the shutdown, the penny-pinching removal of trams would be one of the many missing pieces that had many guests saying that Disneyland just wasn't the same. So when you ask me why Disneyland fans are so excited that the Disneyland trams are coming back, it's so much more than a story of getting rid of an annoyingly long walk. The trams represent one step closer to Disneyland feeling like normal. And while everyone deals with 2020 being the lost year of their life, we don't want to deal with our happy place, our land of escapism, being a reflection of our pandemic grief. Walking the tram path was a reminder that life had changed and not for the better. The trams returning is a reminder that life is slowly returning back to normal. And while a lost workforce may not be returning, who knows where the 2019 parking lot and tram cast members ended up? We do know there are workers coming back to their positions. And a new chapter is being written in Disneyland's long and complicated history. 
a history that weaves between commerce and creativity, making magic, and making money while doing so. But for today, the citizens of Disneyland celebrate another piece of the magic coming back home to Disneyland from its 2020 break of 712 days without Disneyland trams. Disneyland is so magical because the littlest things become the biggest things to you. And when you love something this much, you love every detail of it. Driver, you are clear. And it's clear, we all missed you. And it's also clear, no one is taking the Disneyland tram for granted ever again. Friends, if you enjoyed today's video, I know you're gonna love this video right here, showing the day back in July 30th, 2019, when I set the record for riding the tram more than any other guest had ever done before in one operational day. Enjoy the tale of the trampion right now.